All right, so one of the big surprises at AMD's Big Navi reveal event was smart access memory. And they released some charts that also had the rage mode turned on. It was a little confusing, but now we've seen it separated out from rage mode. And we've seen that smart access memory does seem to, in some titles, provide significant performance gains, anywhere from 5% up to 11%. And I've already done a video talking about what exactly they claim smart access memory is doing, which is basically just saying that normally when a CPU is talking to the GPU and wants to access the VRAM, it can only address it in 256 megabyte blocks. And since the GPU has a lot of those and might want to address more information than that at a time, then that can sometimes create a bottleneck. And this relieves that bottleneck causing in some games as much as like an 11% gain in Forza Horizon 4, again, as long as we believe AMD's benchmarks for these things. But I doubt they're completely outside the, the window of <laughs> normal reality, because if they just flat out lied about this stuff and that came out in reviews, that would be horrible publicity. So I'm not saying they're not cherry picking the games here, because there's probably games where this does literally nothing if they're not bottlenecked by this. Um, but it does seem to have a good effect in some games and I'll take free performance, right? So the question last time I did a video explaining what this was is, can NVIDIA respond? Well, in the meantime, there's been a lot of things going on uh, <laughs> in discussion forums about this and things like that, that wait a minute, isn't this just something called resizable bar, which Windows does support and is just kind of a PCIe uh, feature? that shouldn't just be an AMD exclusive. And so the question was, can NVIDIA GPUs just support that? Well, finally yesterday, we do seem to have some evidence that yeah, they can just flat out support it. So a tweet uh, from Gamers Nexus tells us that from NVIDIA regarding SAM, so the smart access memory, the capability for resizable bar support uh, or sorry, for resizable bar, is part of the PCIe Express spec. NVIDIA hardware supports this functionality and will enable it on Ampere GPUs through future software updates. We have it working internally and are seeing similar performance results. And then they follow it up with hard to fit in a tweet, but basically they're working on enabling the same feature as AMD smart access memory which is the AMD GPU and CPU combining to give you a performance uplift on games on both Intel and AMD, on both Intel and AMD. Notice that. There's no ETA yet for when this will be available. Doesn't look like it will be ready before the RX 6000 launch, but we'll keep an eye on development. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, so it's basically NVIDIA saying, yeah, we can do that too. Our hardware does support it. All we need to do is issue a software update to allow it. Now, my big question is like, okay, will this work the same? Is it gonna work as well? And AMD seemed to be claiming on their website about SAM that it only would work if you combined very specific components. They wanted you to have a 500 series motherboard, a Ryzen 5000 series processor, and a Radeon 6000 series GPU. And we're claiming that at least at the start, uh, older motherboards, older Ryzen processors, older Radeon GPUs would not be able to support this feature. And a lot of people were wondering, well, is this just a software thing or is it really a hardware thing? Can the hardware really support it? So I've tried to dig into this as much as I'm able. Now, some of the details of all of this is frankly a bit above my pay grade, but I've looked into the Microsoft hardware developer stuff on what exactly is resizable bar support. And is this something that should work on, for example, a PCI 3.0 lane or something like that? Well, okay, let's, let's dig in here. This, this is actually fairly reasonably worded for somebody like myself and maybe you guys to understand. Some of you guys might understand it better than me. It says, okay, it is typical today for a discrete graphics processing unit, so a GPU, to have only a small portion of its frame buffer exposed over the PCI bus. Uh, for example, with 32-bit OSs, discrete GPUs typically claim a 256 megabyte in-out region for their frame buffers, and this is how typical firmware configures them. So the basic idea is saying that typically firmware is only giving you access to the 256 megabyte block, uh, which is consistent kind of with what AMD was saying that they were expanding on. Okay, so this is saying for Windows Display Driver model, 
Version 2, Windows will renegotiate the size of a GPU bar post firmware, so post firmware initialization on GPUs that are supporting resizable bar. So to me, that's telling that that's saying that the GPU itself does need to be capable of supporting this, and that this could largely be a firmware initialization, firmware not being hardware. So I think that's what Nvidia is saying is that. Their hardware is capable of doing this. They just need to issue a firmware or software update of some type that allows this. And then this says C resizable bar capability in the uh, specifications library. We're going to jump over there in just a second, but let's finish up on this page. Because I want to jump over there to figure out, is this requiring PCIe 4.0 or 3.0? Because it seems like if it only took 3.0, we'd have this capability on a lot more systems than AMD seem to be implying. Anyway, so it says a GPU supporting resizable bar must ensure, so it knows what must it be able to do? Well, it should be able to ensure that it can keep the display up and showing a static image during the reprogramming of the bar. In particular, we don't want to see the display go blank and back up during this process. So apparently that's an issue that could happen, so we need to make sure that these things have been programmed and designed in a way that that doesn't happen. It's important to have smooth transition between the firmware displayed image, the bootloader image, and the first kernel mode driver generated image. It is guaranteed that no PCI transaction will occur toward the GPU while the renegotiation is taking place. So they're just giving, uh, you know, information on how should this transition, that it needs to work smoothly. This, there's apparently does need to be some work done to ensure that this is programmed in a way that it happens smoothly without getting some blank black screens and all of that. It says, for the most part, this renegotiation will be invisible to the kernel mode driver. When the renegotiation is successful, the kernel mode driver will observe that the GPU bar has been resized to its maximum size to expose the entire VRAM of the discrete GPU. Okay, so it does say to expose the entire VRAM of the discrete GPU. So again, that does seem to be what AMD was claiming they were doing with smart access memory, was exposing the entire VRAM of the discrete GPU rather than just that 256 megabyte block. So it does seem like this resizable bar support can expose the entire VRAM of the discrete GPU, just like AMD said they were doing. Um, Now it says, upon successful resizing, the kernel mode driver should expose a single CPU visible memory segment to the video memory manager. So instead of being split into all these discrete blocks, it seems like you would have all of it available as a single unit. The video memory manager will map CPU virtual addresses directly to this range when the CPU need to access the content of the memory segment. Okay. So yeah, this seems to be describing exactly what AMD claims to be doing with smart access memory. So my question then is, why does AMD seem to think that this needs to be so locked down to these particular motherboards, processors, and GPUs? So I jumped over to the PCI uh, specifications library. Okay, so in here, I believe what we have are the PCIe specifications. And if I'm understanding it correctly, and it's possible that I'm not, because like I said, I'm not super familiar with this. This is a little outside my normal <laughs> comfort zone slash area of expertise. I believe that this is the like specification revision should pretty much be like PCIe 4.0 or 5.0 or 1.0 or 3.0. So what I wanted to explore here is does it seem like this resizable bar is limited to PCIe 4.0 motherboards or something like that? So if I just go to uh, like use my search bar here and search for resizable bar on this page, well, it pops up a few times um, and I'm seeing it as a 3.x, which I'm assuming means a PCIe 3.0 motherboard should be able to do it, right? Um, Again, we see it as a three point something here. And um, let's jump around here. Does it pop up again? Resizable bar compatibility. This one is 2.x. So again, if I'm understanding what that number means, this seems to me to indicate that nothing about this is a PCIe 4.0 specific feature. Now, I don't know if there would be things about PCIe 4.0 that are allowing like some bandwidth issues where this wouldn't work as well on 3.0 or something like that. So, and again, I'm sure there are people 
maybe in my comment section, or you can find them else online, who do know more about this than I do. But I did my best to research it here and give you guys the information that I could find and confirm for you. So assuming this means what I think it does, which is that the um, nothing about this has to be PCIe 4.0 or something like that, then it actually raises some big questions for me, which are, um, this seems kind of off-brand for AMD. Here's what I mean by that. So AMD seems to be the one that, compared with NVIDIA, is more open about supporting open standards that everybody can use. I'm thinking of things like G-Sync versus FreeSync, stuff like that. Or the fact that AMD is saying that they're trying to develop a competitor to DLSS that is open and broadly supported rather than needing to be specifically supported on a proprietary solution. So generally, AMD with their GPU stuff seems to be trying to be broadly open supported. And yet with this smart access memory, they seem to be acting like this is some unique thing to the AMD ecosystem. And they're claiming that you have to have a 500 series motherboard, a 5000 series Ryzen processor, and a 6000 series AMD GPU. And I'm wondering, was that like lying to get people to buy the best newest stuff? Or is there actually something about that hardware that allows this to work better or more smoothly on an older motherboard? Maybe could it technically support it, but it doesn't work as well? Uh, do the older CPUs and GPUs, are they actually missing some kind of hardware feature that makes this possible? Or is this something that will end up being backwards compatible with other systems once AMD does some kind of a software update to them? Or maybe motherboard manufacturers would have to do that. I don't really know the details on that. I'm just saying that this raises some questions for me about this feeling like it's kind of off-brand for AMD. And uh, I definitely am a supporter of things being more open and more accessible. And overall, I'm really excited that it does seem like NVIDIA should be able to support this. And they're saying support it on their Ampere GPUs. I would love to find out that this is actually something that both companies could support on their, their whole like uh, <laughs> older lineups too, because it sounds like, you know, this could be something updated possibly in, in software. I mean, that's what it sounded like when I read the resizable bar support. Are the, although maybe there is some hardware features of the motherboard, the GPU, the processor that do make this work better in some situations than others. And again, that's probably something we'll find about more in the future. But for now, uh, a big takeaway here seems to be that if smart access memory was one of your main compelling reasons to go AMD this time around, then it's looking like that's only going to be a temporary monopoly on that type of uh, solution. It's looking like NVIDIA is very confident that they're gonna be able to offer it as well, and they'll be able to support it on both Intel and AMD processors and platforms. So that's very interesting to me. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about all of this in the comment section, and as always, I hope you guys have an excellent day.